So I was going to do a separate review and comparison video for these controllers, but um, no point. It's probably best I just fuse my shitty reviews with my equally shitty controller comparison videos. Now you guys aren't gonna believe it, but for this video, a company noticed me again, and this time it was the company with the, the, the sex name. Seriously though, why are you guys called Thrustmaster? I'm, I'm on your website. It doesn't look like a porn website. I mean, that that looks like a dildo. Anyways, they decided it was it was a great idea to send me their eSwap S Pro. Probably not a great idea. And I'll be reviewing it alongside its older, much fatter brother, the eSwap X Pro, which I reviewed quite a while ago. But if you'd like to watch a review that's slightly worse than the one you're currently watching, uh, you can hit the top right hand corner for that. The eSwap S is in this strange area where it, it's kind of just sitting in the corner. No one's really reviewed it, and I find it strange because even though I was not the biggest fan of some of the things that the eSwap X had to offer, like the god-awful buttons, I do genuinely think that in the case of the eSwap S, it is one of the most recommendable controllers for shooter asshole players like myself. So the obvious question is, why do I feel that way about this device? As avid controller players will know, they die to really anything. You could set a controller in a dustproof, airproof, a, a room that doesn't even allow light inside of it. Guaranteed within four months, it'll somehow still find a way to break itself, and Microsoft will tell you to go fuck yourself when you try to redeem the warranty. And the main reason that these controllers end up becoming e-waste is because of stick drift, so Thrustmaster found it a, a wonderful idea to just swap them out. Now, of course, I've talked about this before many a time. This isn't a fix. You pay $20 to have some jack-offs deliver your package, or in the case of my Amazon packages, steal your shit, and then you throw the old problem away and put the exact same problem in the controller. I have a problem with that, obviously, but I still find this title to be true. These are the easiest solution to stick drift, and for that, I can find them to be heavily recommendable to the average first-person shooter player. Because obviously, most people couldn't solder to save their own goddamn mother, so fixing stick drift, kind of the only option. But the eSwap X doesn't just allow you to swap out the thumbsticks like the eSwap S. It also allows you to swap out the D-pad so you can change between Gay Station or Xbox button layouts. Thrustmaster doesn't really seem to follow the same logic every other company does though, what they'll do is they'll usually take a product that's more expensive, they'll take features off of it, or dumb them down, sell a cheaper version. Difference between the eSwap S and the X is that there aren't really downgrades here. Instead of a D-pad that's swappable, you get a D-pad that is tactile. Thrustmaster calls them their tact switches, and that's what they use in their ABXY buttons on both controllers, but for the eSwap X, they decided to put the D-pad in one place and make it tactile, which in my opinion is a much much better alternative to a swappable D-pad that feels like the, the mushiest experience you ever did see. These tack switches have their own set of statistics, and in hand, they feel amazing. They are a bit more difficult to press than your average ABXY buttons, but they do feel really, really nice. They feel very crisp. They sound amazing. Give them a listen. I'm very happy to report that a lot of what's going on here at the eSwap S is really just improvements over the eSwap X and mainly a lot of the things that people had bitched about. The most obvious example being that everyone bitched about the eSwap X being morbidly obese. And in response to that, the eSwap S is 20% lighter and it also has a far more ergonomic and a slightly smaller design for the shell. The eSwap S kind of serves the same purpose the Xbox One S did. Fix all the really retarded problems with the original product and oh yeah, please make it a little bit smaller. I do gotta respect Thrustmaster for this one because you know, you ask most companies, you know, change the button layout on their controllers, make their buttons easier to press, make their controllers more reliable, make their thumbsticks more accurate. And they're just sitting there like, but that's simply not possible. Why isn't it possible? It's just not. Why not, you stupid bastard? Improvements, improvements, and many improvements have been made. Did Thrustmaster make the controllers faster? 
not really. I mean, it doesn't really matter anyways, but the difference between like five and 10 milliseconds, one and 10 milliseconds, it doesn't matter. But for those who are curious, yes, the controller can be overclocked. So yes, again, I was wrong. The Victrix Gambit is not the only Xbox controller that can be overclocked to a significant degree. These controllers can too, as they start out with a polling rate of 200 Hertz that can be overclocked to around 500 Hertz. I've talked about it in past videos. Yes, every single controller can be overclocked. If that overclock does anything though, that's a completely different debate. Both these controllers do not like to be overclocked anywhere past 500 Hertz though. If you push them to a thousand, uh, the eSwap S specifically stops working and the eSwap X cuts in and out, at least in my experience. So do overclocking on your own accord. And again, you don't need to. Moving on, uh, one thing that actually did get an update, buttons. A four button controller is only as good as the placement of those buttons. And unfortunately, Thrustmaster both put them all the way in the back of their controller and in the middle. That is literally the hardest place you could have put them. Thank you. The S takes a different approach, making the buttons much wider, angling them outward, they're a lot bigger, and the smaller reduced size of the controller means that the buttons are far more reachable. So these feel pretty comfortable. I'm actually a big fan. From the looks of it, they would be more accessible to the average gamer. So it's a lot easier to recommend a controller like this. And while the eSwap S does have a decreased amount of buttons, and yes, they are still, they could, they could use some work. They're a much better alternative, in my opinion, to the eSwap X's buttons. Two out of 10, it's uh, seven, seven out of 10. And that's because 10 out of 10s are reserved for perfected items like the NXG mini sticks. While not actually perfect, Thrustmaster's S2, or in the case of the eSwap X, the S5 NXG mini sticks are some of the best thumbsticks I've ever felt, right up there with the Gullet Kit King Kong Pro 2. These thumbsticks are completely interchangeable between the controllers. The thumbsticks are essentially identical anyways, aside from the caps, the caps on the eSwap X, are a little bit bigger and can also be unscrewed and removed. The caps on the eSwap S, however, are a little bit smaller and cannot be removed, but you can put Xbox control freaks on them. So that is a plus. Just like the tact switches, they also give you a laundry list of, of specs and details about these things, which all do seem kind of accurate. I mean, the recentering position of these things is so insane. You can drop your dead zones to 0% both in the Thrust Mapper X software and in whatever game you're playing, and you will not see a single lick of stick drift, providing your thumbsticks are new enough that they still work that way. Over time, that's probably not going to remain the case. However, I still think it's pretty ballsy for Thrustmaster to include these numbers, period. I mean, two million clicks for thumbsticks? Who else really does that? I mean, there's not many companies out there that are confident enough to put reliability numbers, like actual physical hard numbers on the devices that they're releasing. Like, could you imagine? Could you actually imagine if Xbox put the amount of time an Xbox controller was rated for on the box. On the back of the box, it would just say, rated for three weeks from purchase. Now, if I take a second to stop bitching about Microsoft, the video would end. But I'm going to take a second to stop bitching about them to uh, tell you guys some positive things. The trigger stops are okay. I had meant to talk about this earlier because it's very, 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 very interesting. You'll notice that the trigger stops didn't fucking change at all, not even a little bit. Both these trigger stops stop at the exact same distance and their dead zones can be adjusted in the exact same way in the software. Now, I'm not too upset about the trigger stops, but the reality of them is the quickness of them relies more so on the adjustable dead zones that you can use in the software rather than the physical stopping distance of the trigger. On the next iteration of eSwap controllers, I would love, 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 love to see trigger stops that are just a little bit shorter. The main reason they're getting a pass is because no one else knows how to do trigger stops right. And they got half the equation right, which is adjust your damn dead zones, which you can do in the Thrust Mapper software, which I'm gonna go over it real quick as always with software. I'm going to leave a full tutorial that someone made in the description below because I'm not gonna go over everything here. Although I will give it a quick rundown because it's very interesting. Unlike every other goddamn mother pro controller software on the market, you can't remap all the buttons on the controller, but here with the eSwap S and the eSwap X, that is totally possible. Every single button is remappable to every single other button on the controller. Not only that, but you get adjustable thumbstick dead zones that also allow you to change sensitivity curves. You get fully adjustable trigger dead zones, fully adjustable vibration motors for your mom's vibrator, and all of this is mappable to two swappable profiles, which you could swap on the fly with a button on the faceplate of the controller itself. Out of the few controller softwares I've used, Thrustmaster definitely ranks pretty high, which is 
uh, a good and bad thing because I don't know what to tell them to improve on. If possible, I'd like to see some more experimental, new, futuristic shit. I don't know what it would be. Every software that has all the best features has the same selection of features. I'm not going to harp on this any more than I already have. They've actually addressed the issue and have done something about it. One issue the eSwap S does have is that it isn't nearly as customizable as the eSwap X, and this is going to be a problem for some people. There aren't different colored accessory packs available, which is racist. The media module for the most part has been removed and simplified to two buttons on the front of the faceplate, and the D-pad is stationary. But again, with the eSwap S, you win some, you lose some. The media module was extremely cumbersome, who the hell needs all those buttons? The D-pad is super tactile and feels way better, and the controller doesn't need a color accessory pack to look good. But okay, so what? We're in the downside section of the review, Kuda. Thrustmaster asked you to be as honest as possible. What the hell's wrong with this controller? Well, once you peel back the layers, it's never really the prettiest picture. The eSwap S is newer, so pinpointing reliability issues is harder. However, there are two controllers which exist in the world that you and I live in right now that have existed for years before the eSwap S and they're very similar. In fact, they're built mostly out of the same materials. That would be the original PS4 eSwap Pro and the eSwap X Pro, which are both two and three years old, I believe. These controllers were not the most reliable in their day. Let's just, let's go to Amazon, even though the reviews are usually bullshit. Let's go to Amazon and see what people have to say. Okay, so what do we got? A shitload of NXG stick drift complaints, uh, double-clicking ABXY buttons, which may also be connected to the thumbsticks in some magical fucking way. All right, so even though this controller does come with a solid warranty, here's the deal. Put a cap on the amount you're gonna be spending here. If you buy this controller, only make sure you're buying two or three replacement thumbsticks, and I mean individual thumbsticks. If you're repeatedly getting stick drift on this controller over and over again in these same time increments, move on. But okay, yeah, it has some reliability problems, everything does, sure. What I'm seeing here though, most, most controllers don't have this problem. So you guys are sending people packages that are already open with products that are already used. Your NXG mini sticks, which are touted as being crazy awesome, uh, sometimes have really bad reliability problems. And your ABXY buttons, which also have a 5 million click lifespan, not, not so much sometimes. The only thing I'm going to say is go back to the drawing board and don't completely redo your design, just refine it. And before we move on to the conclusion, not trying to be harsh on you guys. It's always about the consumer, and I'm always going to do everything I can to defend the consumer. Thrustmaster's done a lot here. I do think they can do more. I give them praise for what they have done, but I will also always criticize them for what they could do. Because in the land of controllers, a company can give you a, a foot, but realistically, you're already 500 steps in the negative. Giving me a foot is nice, but let's try, let's try to, let's, let's, let's make some more strides. Let's, longer strides, more, more feats. Obviously, I've geared this review more toward the, the sweat player, the FPS player, the shooter player, mainly for reliability and accuracy reasons. The NXG mini sticks can not only be replaced, but are deadly accurate when they're working well, as stated earlier. The price of the controller is significantly lower than that of an Elite Series 2, any custom Xbox controller you can get, and while yeah, no product is perfect, I think the idea behind this one is extremely unique and it is at the very least worth trying once. Are either of these controllers the easiest to use or to get used to? No. Are they the most reliable? No. Are they some of the most accurate and some of the best for actual competitive play? Yeah. But Thrustmaster's controllers are optimized enough that I think I can recommend them for the sweatier amongst us. So if you are interested, there'll be links down in the description, not affiliate links or anything like that. Thrustmaster, you guys are absolute gods. I mean, I can't appreciate you enough for sending this controller out. I really do like your controllers. I love your devices and I want to review more. In the future, I do plan, regardless of whether we, I'm working with Thrustmaster or not, I am going to be doing reviews of their steering wheels in the future, maybe some of their dildos. Uh... We'll see about that. But I would like to make uh, a very quick announcement before we end the video, a couple actually. Do you see that day? That's fucked. My last review was like a month ago. I lost. <laughs> sorry, sorry.
And I'd also like to point out, um, I have a new Instagram. This is for my YouTube. This is for my Legos. A lot of the minifigures you guys saw throughout this video are on that Instagram, and I'll be posting a lot more of my Lego stuff there simply because I, I, I like Legos. And again, like I said, I plan on reviewing more Thrustmasters products in the future, whether they release controllers. Like I said, I want to review one of their steering wheels in the future. I have some Beam and G related content that's going to be fire. Anyways, I love you guys. If you're still watching, not quite sure how. Oh yeah, I can't use my fucking outro because UMG decided to claim it again! Stop stealing my fucking money!